doing a recording announcement. Okay. And this is obviously not live. <laughs> it is. No. Um, so yeah, um, you know, you just actually mentioned this. Uh, I've been at this paper 40 years, 28 of those as a columnist. Um, I guess, what are your biggest takeaways, you know, upon leaving the paper? Well, this, is, this has been a great ride. Uh, being a columnist is a privilege, and uh, it's been a lot of fun to be involved in community issues and ideas and having a voice to express opinion. So uh, it's, it's uh, really beats having to work in an insurance company. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, it's been, a, it's been a great ride. I've, I've been, enjoyed it a lot. Um, you know, with the landscape of new, newspapers kind of changing, um, you know, I'd say you were around, you know, working as a reporter at the time when it was probably uh, much different. Um, how have things changed? Well, you know, when I started, I actually started working at uh, United Press International in Houston in the early 70s, and uh, we had teletype machines, and uh, you carried a dime on your press card because if you got out somewhere you need to phone in a store, you always had a dime to use the phone, and we didn't have these phones you carry in your pocket and, and computers. Uh, uh, so it, it's, uh, the technology has obviously changed tremendously. The, uh, and uh, newspapers uh, were much bigger staffs then, uh, bigger circulations. It wasn't the competition that you have now with all the different uh, voices out there. Uh, definitely changed. I think some of it's for the better. Uh, technology is uh, good. It makes you be able to communicate faster. Sometimes I think it's worse because we don't have uh, a lot of times the editing process that you used to go through before things got out to the public, uh, now it's almost immediate and oftentimes it's wrong. Uh, uh, there's not those safeguards that you used to have back, back in, in, the, in the old days. But uh, uh, it's been a, you know, the competition was stronger back early on, especially when I worked for UPI, you had, your competitor was Associated Press, and so you were always battling, and that, that gives you a, a sense of urgency to, to you know, get out front sometimes it's not there today. Right on. Um, can you speak to, has social media at all played into how a columnist, you know, does this job? Uh, social media, uh, really hadn't played into how I do my job, uh, it, it, other than the fact you get a lot more response. It's easier for people to respond to your column. Sometimes, we're, you know, maybe not thinking because it's so easy to put a, put a, uh, uh, a comment out there. But, uh, uh, I'm not the most uh, sa savvy person on social media. Uh, I think uh, future columns will do a lot more with, uh, you know, blogs and, and sending, you know, things on Facebook and all these different forums that I didn't really ever feel comfortable with. I was, I'm, I'm a newspaper guy, you know, I was, print is, is what I have always been in. And uh, uh, so uh, maybe it's, it's best that I sort of move on because I think things are changing rapidly. Yeah, right off into the sunset. Yeah. Um, so you have a pretty unique perspective on things, you know, as someone who gets to, you know, on a weekly basis, you know, put his opinion in the paper and have that read by so many people. Um, what do you think are the biggest challenges that lie ahead for Jacksonville? Well, I, uh, I write a little bit about this in my final column that's going to run, I believe, in Sunday's newspaper. Uh, read my columns, you know that I have a great love of the St. John's River and uh, our natural resources. All right, slave driver, you're going to get and your that, 40, uh, 40 hours. One of our challenges is going to be to protect that, take advantage of that critical asset for the city and make it what it could be as one. Uh, another is that uh, downtown is, is really beginning to emerge as a viable uh, uh, downtown. We can't let that momentum die. Uh, I think it's, there's a lot of really good things that are on the horizon that are potential. Those potentials need to become reality. And if we let the momentum die, as we have in the past, we will, uh, will fail. And then the, the third issue I think is really critical for Jacksonville is making sure all of Jacksonville, every neighborhood in Jacksonville participates in the successes that are ahead. And that's not always been the case here. So, in sum, the health of the St. John's River is critical. The revitalization of downtown Jacksonville. Oh, yeah. And then what was the last one again? The, you know, if you go back to the promise of consolidation, all the neighborhoods were going to be benefit from consolidated government, and that has not happened. We 
we still have many neighborhoods that have been left behind with uh, resources, with infrastructure, and things like that. So for the whole city to succeed, we make sure all every neighborhood is a part of that success. Right on. Um, what's one piece of advice you would give to Jacksonville's current leadership or uh, those who aspire to public office? Well, I think it, uh, be transparent in what you're doing and, and listen to everybody and, and then try to make good decisions. Don't get... I think a city needs to get away from partisanship, Republican, Democrats. That may have a place in Washington, but I don't think it has a place in local government. So kind of wipe those things off and let's find out what's best for Jacksonville, build consensus around that, and, and move forward. Right on. Um, what's the best response you've ever gotten from a leader? <laughs> uh, I've uh, had numerous responses of very creative attacks <laughs> on me, which uh, uh, I, I, we were talking about one uh, a little while ago about this was purely, you know, it eviscerated me and my column and my abilities, my, my, uh, my thinking power and all that, and ended it sincerely. <laughs> so I, <don't> <laughs> I always get a kick out of that. Uh, I've been lucky to get a lot of responses to column, uh, you know, from supporters and detractors. I don't, I certainly don't mind hearing from detractors. As long as people are reading the column, then I'm being successful. If you agree with me or don't agree with me, that's, that's fine. Uh, just be a leader. That's all you ask for. Okay, so along the same lines, what's the uh, worst response you've ever gotten from a leader? Well, that's, that's a hard one to pick. <laughs> you know, most, most readers, uh, even if they disagree with me, are, are fairly reasonable. I've, if the people call up to start shouting, and then I just hang up, you know, I, that, that, that gets us nowhere. But, uh, that, you know, that's been rare. I mean, I've been, I've had a lot of discussions with people who disagree with me, and we will agree not to agree, uh, and then move on. And that, that's the way it should be. And that's, you know, should be able to talk about these issues and, uh, and form your ideas. That's, uh, for columnists to be successful, I think that's what you're doing, is throwing ideas out there, getting people to talk about them. I'm try to, obviously going to try to convince you where I come from, but I'm going to listen to, to your side as well. Let's uh, talk about the current state of public discourse. Um, yeah, it's not very good right now. Uh, and that's that's discouraging. You know, I think that's part of the partisanship uh, that goes on. You know, people are so set in the ways of their party that they won't they don't listen to the other side, you're wrong if you're on the other side. Well, no party's right all the time, and that's why you need to learn. So the, the state of this, we start yelling at people, screaming at people, uh, it, it gets us nowhere. Now, you know, I could be accused of fomenting some of that because I'm, I'm a kind of writer who likes to make, you know, strong statements, and, and uh, uh, but that's that's how you get readers to read is by, you know, if they're wishy-washy, they're not going to read you. But, uh, I, I would hope that we could get past the, uh, the yelling and, and the and discrediting of anybody that doesn't agree with us. You talked about um, kind of how a columnist you know, gets a reaction, um, something I think we commonly refer to as hot takes. Um, do you think uh, newspapers should deploy resources for columnists moving forward? Do you think that's something that has potential to diminish? You know, uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the future. I don't know. Uh, obviously, the numbers of, of in this newsroom are down. Uh, you know, uh, will there be a place for columnists? Uh, I hope so, because I think it's I think it's important to have local voices expressing opinions in the newspaper. I, I hope that they will continue to find somebody to do that. I mean, right now, we've like Mark Woods, our Metro columnist, who does a fantastic job. Uh, would be a loss not to have somebody like Mark Woods. I think when you start getting to the opinion pages, like where I write, I think having a local opinion writer is important. Uh, I would like to have more than one. I, you know, I, I'm always been considered a, a liberal uh, on the liberal side of the columns. It would have been nice to have a, uh, someone on, you know, more conservative, you know, writing back and forth, which we, we've had in the past, but now the numbers are, are starting to diminish where you don't get that. And I th you know, they, maybe some of the the social media, the blogs, and all that will 
people make up for that is people find other avenues to express their opinions. But I, I think newspapers would be poor if the fact that they don't have uh, some pretty strong columns. Do you think they're more successful if, say, someone who's more progressive in their slant, you know, has a foil on the conservative end of the spectrum? I think it makes it more interesting, don't you? Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just makes it more interesting to get going back and forth. You go back to those early days on 60 Minutes when you had the two, you know, uh, commentators battling each other all the time. Uh, um, how much feedback over the years have you gotten from uh, Jacksonville's mayors or others in positions of power and authority? Uh, you know, I, I've, I've gotten a, a lot, as you might imagine. <laughs> uh, I, I will say I've actually been writing a column. I started writing the column when Tommy Azuri was mayor. Uh, uh, and so I had Tommy, I had uh, 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 Don Delaney, Ed Austin, you know, uh, Don Payton, Randy Curry. And, uh, I, I've certainly had disagreements with them, which they would call and be hangry, but but then we always got past that. Uh, I, it's never been personal, and, and, I, and I think I'm probably still considered to be friends with some of those uh, those mayors that I've, I've criticized. But I also I always made a point of not only criticizing mayors or city council members, but I also made a point of saying when they did things that I thought was right and giving them uh, the uh, kudos for that. So. I, uh, it's uh, that's been fun. I mean, I like the guys. People who have been mayor here are pretty smart people, so it's been fun to get tangled in debates with them. Um, in all the spirit of discussion, uh, any of them ever say anything that just stuck with you over the years? Any particular messages or? Yeah. Uh, well, no, they're all. Uh, each one was different. Uh, and each one uh, uh, handled things differently. Tommy, you know, maybe he had the, the disadvantage of being the first mayor <laughs> when I was riding and they hadn't, hadn't seen anything like this before. Uh, I think he got, uh, he got probably fairly angry early on and, and wouldn't talk to me, but, but Tommy and I, are, we're good friends now. And, you know, of course, he's on the city council now again. And we, uh, uh, we, we, we talk a lot, so uh, yeah, they, that, that part of the job has been fun. So despite kind of the sometimes like adversarial component to the job, uh, all these people are people you get along with well now? Yes, except of course we're still in Lenny's term, I'm not so sure. Right. <laughs> he's still yeah, he's still just into the second year, you know, I don't know how that, that'll play out, but uh, yeah, I get, yeah, I've, I, I, I made a point of calling uh, uh, talking to Tommy and John Payton and John Delaney and tell them, you know, thanks for all the time we worked together. I, me I meant that. Uh, uh, and of course, you know, Jake is one of my favorite mayors. I wasn't actually writing a column when I was in the uh, management part of the newsroom then, but uh, I've certainly gotten to know Jake over the years and have written numerous things about him. And he's, he's, he's one of my favorites. He's, uh, he's the last of a kind. Um. Here's a hypothetical for you. Uh, say there's a fire in the newsroom. It's going to torch everything in here, your entire body of work. You can save one piece, one story, one column. Uh, which one are you preserving for generations to come? Uh, well, I guess it'd be my last one because they're all, you know, each one is better <laughs> as, as I go on. I, you know, I, I actually, you know, I've made a habit of cutting out all my columns over the, over, the, over the years and putting them in folders. I've got boxes of these columns at, at the house that uh, I guess I'll just end up throwing away <laughs> because, you know, what are you going to do with all these columns? I may say one or two for the grandkids and say, this is what your granddad did. It's, it's called a newspaper, you know. <laughs> he wrote a column. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I probably would. I mean, I'm probably proudest of, uh, of the work I've done to try to with the St. John's River and, and, and to save some of those and, uh, and uh, you know, the Okawaha and the Springs and, and those columns that I think are important that uh, to take care of those resources. Um, 
So I know we talked about like, you know, how newsrooms have gotten smaller, circulation has shrunk. Um, but the Times Unionist obviously had some pretty groundbreaking work still in recent yeah, years. Yeah. The Corinne Brown yeah. stuff being, you know, among them. Um, what's your message to uh, aspiring journalists? Well, you know, uh, this, you make a good point, and we have some really talented uh, young reporters here, and, uh, and older reporters here. We have some really talented reporters at, at this newspaper, and they're doing good work. Uh, my advice to um, to talk to someone about going into journalism, are you sure? <laughs> you know, you're probably not going to make a lot of money in this business. Uh, but that's not important. If you like being involved in issues and, 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 and ferreting out the truth and, and helping your community and your uh, readers to do better, it's a, it's a great profession. You, you need to learn now. You need to learn how to communicate through all different platforms, which I didn't have to do when I was growing up with the newspaper or the print. It's like, now you're going to have to be able to know how to do video and, and all the different platforms that you can go in. So be well-rounded in how you, and they're, they're great things. It's a great way to present stories now. I mean, if you're talented and uh, know how to tell a story through video and, and all that, that can be much more effective than print ever was. So that part of it is exciting. The part that's not been determined yet is how, how do you make that work financially? I mean, uh, to have the talent that we have like in this newsroom requires a pretty good investment of money. And if, if that money's not there, how do you keep this kind of journalism going? And that's, I don't know the answer to that, but it's, uh, it's important for our city, our state, and our nation to have that kind of journalism. I guess this one is kind of broad, but uh, going forward, what's next for you? Oh, well, I, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm fortunate. My wife and I own a, uh, uh, a farm over just west of Ta Tallahassee. Uh, I'll be spending more time over there. Uh, it's a beautiful part of the country, uh, nice rolling hills with and ponds and creeks and all that. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll still be out kayaking on the St. John's River. Uh, Tamuka Preserve, and I'm I want to still write some things. I, I'll uh, I'm already uh, talked about continuing to write for Jay, the Downtown Magazine that we started here. I'll continue to write for that, and hopefully some for the First Coast Magazine. And uh, you know who knows? I'm, maybe I'll figure out how to blog, and you know still get some opinions out that way. So I'm not, I'm not through. I'm just uh, just moving into a different chapter. Uh, are uh, Are you ruling out any guest columns, or you know? Yeah, I, I hadn't talked to, about that here. I don't know if they're going to do that or not. Uh, I mean, I'm, it's not a, it's possible. I, I prefer they give it no full-time column that's, uh, you know, that's doing, uh, doing the kind of work that I was doing. But uh, who knows? I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm not, and I won't have the routine of having to, you know, here comes another column, I'm going to write. <laughs> you know? uh, it was, uh, Mark Woods always had this great description when you're a column writer. You, it's like you're standing under a windmill, and you know you gotta write a column. And there's that blade coming at you. Oh, okay, I got it. And you look up, and here comes another, another blade at you. You know, it's always there. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong. Is today your final day? Today is the final day. Yeah. Uh, what was playing through your head when you got up this morning and came into work, knowing that that was the case? Well, I was going okay. Have one more column to write, <laughs> and I got that done this morning. Uh, you know, it was interesting driving into the, I remember the first time I drove into this parking lot this building you know, almost 40 years ago, and all the people have come and gone since then. Uh, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with what, uh, that I've, it's been a great career, uh, and I'm looking forward to, you know, doing, doing other things. So it's, uh, a lot of good memories here. I mean, you wouldn't believe the number of people have come through here while I've been here. <laughs> you know, there have been some uh, some characters and uh, some really fun people here. So it's been it's been fun. Uh, well, that does it for my question. Oh, yeah? Thank okay. you so much. I really appreciate it.